What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today in this episode of Sonar Fishing, we're gonna be throwing a bone to the Florida anglers down there because I miss Florida fishing. I don't get to, to scratch that itch this year because we're not starting down in Florida uh, in the opens. We're actually ending in, Flo in Florida in the opens, which is so bizarre. I, I don't think I've ever ended a season in, uh, in Florida. We got the Harris chain in October, so that's kind of crazy. But um, usually I'm down in Florida, you know, in the month of January and one of my favorite baits is a swimming worm. And so I wanted to talk about, you know, the, the swimming worm technique and the bait that I like to use for that technique because, uh, you know, the years that I, 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 I learned how to bass fish and how to break down the, those grassy lakes like Okeechobee, you know, the Harris chain, Kissimmee chain, um, the the swimming worm was the the constant producer it was always the one that allowed me to cover the most amount of water and find those those sweet spots where those fish are because florida fishing is way different than a lot of places around the country uh, a lot of people get get tripped up in in florida fishing because you go down there and everything looks good there's vegetation everywhere it's all gorgeous it looks so bassy and uh, and you think you'd catch fish everywhere but the thing is about Florida lakes, especially a lake like Okeechobee or Kissimmee chain, is the fact that those fish will group, group up in like a one acre area, a five acre area, maybe you know, as big as, as 10 acres. And you know, the, the rest of the, that stretch for miles would look great, but then that one area for whatever reason, that's where they wanna be. Um, the, the best tournament to illustrate that was a couple years ago, the Lake Okeechobee tournament that I finished sixth in that I was leading after the second day. Um, we had this one, like I'd say it was five acres uh, wide. We had like 20 boats fishing in there. That's the only reason why I couldn't win in that area is because there was so much pressure and uh and you know all those fish were right there you could you could get you know out of that five acre area it would still look about the same it looked gorgeous and you wouldn't get a bite but as soon as you get back in there it was just game on so florida fishing is like that you know you just gotta find the the areas where the fish are congregating at that time and it changes throughout the seasons as they get pressure pressured and and uh you know the, the fishing pressure becomes a big factor you know those those fish start to move around a lot um so you have to constantly keep the trolling motor on high and and have a presentation that just covers water and allows you to get a bite here and there to clue you in and that's what a swimming worm does and so a few years ago, um, you know, I, I talked to, to Z-Man and they were interested in designing a, um, a swimming worm and I helped them design this bait. And the bait that we came up with, it took us about a year and a half to perfect it with the Laztec material. And the, uh, the bait is the Turbo Fatties. So this bait right here is uh, what we came up with. So originally we were trying the, the cut tail, which was kind of the standard for swimming worms, but uh, that didn't quite get the right action. You know, I wanted something that would create a lot of disturbance on the surface, but also had a very consistent, you know, uh, uh, movement and action under the water if you were just slow rolling it, or when you dead stick it on a 3 16th ounce weight, I wanted that bait to flutter all the way to the bottom. And so we ended up uh, kind of settling on a similar type tail as like the Z-Man Goat series and the, the Goat Toads, and uh, it worked perfect. As soon as I, I fished this bait with that, that, um, that tail, I was like, we did it. We got, we got the right tail. And what that tail does is it, it, it will create a huge bubble trail on the surface. It, it, it sounds, you know, uh, it's, it sounds perfect. Um, and, uh, and it also has a really good uh, subsurface action. And again, when, you're, when you, you know, let it fall into holes in the grass and stuff, it flutters all the way down. So it's, it's perfect. But uh, essentially the way that, that I fish these, these swimming worms and, and swimming worms uh, similar to it is I'm essentially just making long fan casts with this bait and swimming it back to the boat. It's that easy. It's either, you know, I'm, it, it, when the fish are really active and they're willing to come up to the surface, I may be, you know, ripping it across the surface like a, like a, a soft plastic buzz bait type deal 
or you know most of the time I'm just subsurface just right below the surface just a consistent retrieve and you're just you're casting it on these large grass flats so it could be grass flats that have a lot of, of submergent vegetation, but usually when I'm fishing this, you're, you're, you're targeting those, those spawning areas. And the spawning areas have a, a abundance of, of emergent grass. So like Kissimmee grass, uh, you know, pencil reeds, uh, maiden cane, lily pads, spatter dock, uh, all that different stuff. And this bait does really good with that. And, uh, but it also does really good on, on submergent grass spawning flats. So like, for instance, you go up to like Lake Griffin uh, on the Kissimmee chain or the Harris chain. Um, if you, it, you're not gonna see much emergent grass. There's some patches of like, you know, these little, uh, you know, uh, little pads and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's like submergent grass, like hydrilla and eelgrass. And this bait is really good for, you know, subsurface fishing as well. But I will change my tackle depending on what scenario I'm, I'm presented with. And I will mention at this point that this isn't just a Florida technique. I'm just, because I'm kind of jonesing to go Florida fishing right now and I'm missing, you know, this bite down there. That's what I wanted to talk about. But I've done very well on any grass lake around the country, you know, all the way up to the Mississippi River and La Crosse, Wisconsin, I've caught them on it. Um, so any place where you've got shallow vegetation, the turbo fatties and the swimming worm is going to do really good. But um, the two di real different scenarios that I fish this bait in are, like I just mentioned, the emergent grass up on the real shallow flats and the submergent grass on you know slightly deeper flats. Um, and so I use two different types of tackle for this. Um, the, the tackle that remains the same is, is the weight and the hook. So the hook that I like to use is the Hayabusa 959. You wanna use a, a heavy duty EWG style hook with this. Uh, and so the 959 is my favorite. I think the 5 aught tends to be the, the best size, but sometimes I'll go to a 4 aught too. But um, 5 aught 959 or just EWG heavy wire hook is, is kind of standard, you, uh, you know, overall. Um, and then also a tungsten weight, you know, you can, it, it really just depends on the type of cover and, and the, 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 the depth and how deep you want to fish this bait. You know, if I'm wanting to buzz it on the surface, I might use an eighth ounce weight you know, something really light. But if I want to, you know, reel it subsurface, I might use a quarter ounce weight. Or, you know, I've even used a three eighths ounce weight sometimes to get even deeper. Um, but, you know, it's all about what depth you wanna to go to. I would say my, my best or my favorite overall um, weight size, tungsten weight size, is gonna be a 3 16 ounce. And it's really important to me uh, to peg the weight to your line, whatever line you're going to use. I think pegging it is super important because if I'm, you know, bringing it along and then all of a sudden there's a hole in the grass where those fish are likely spawning, I'll stop and let it fall into that hole. And, uh, you know, it just having that, that weight pegged helps you get that thing, just like a cruise missile, just dive right into that hole. So, um, the hook and the weight, Pretty standard, but the line is where I'm gonna change. So I forgot to grab some line over here. Let me grab this real quick. So I'm gonna be using two different types of line uh, depending on the situation. In the emergent grass, like I'm fishing Okeechobee, in the you know the the uh, cane fields, the the Kissimmee grass, the lily pads, all that. I'm gonna be using a braid like Seaguar Smackdown. So either. You know, usually I'm using 50 because it allows me to make long casts, um, but sometimes I'll go to 65 if it's like in real thick pads. But uh, I'm gonna be using 50 most of the time, and, uh, and you know, that's just because you're gonna be fishing really, really thick vegetation. You're gonna have to be pulling fish out of stuff that's getting tangled on the line, and, and, uh, and you're making long casts too. So uh, it's gonna take a lot of abuse. It's not a situation you wanna use fluorocarbon or monofilament, um, but, uh, but braid definitely fits the bill. 
So um, braid, and then with that situation, I'm gonna be using a heavier rod. So I like to use what is called the Okeechobee rod from Fitzgerald Fishing. It's essentially a seven and a half foot heavy action flipping stick, but it's called the Okeechobee rod because it's designed for fishing baits in that, that vegetation. And I love that rod for, for you know just hauling them out with that big braid. Um, so that's my setup for the emergent grass scenario. But when I'm fishing more submergent grass, like the, the Lake Griffin scenario I was talking about earlier, where you're fishing you know, five foot of water in and around eelgrass and, and hydrilla, uh, I like to use fluorocarbon. So I'm gonna be using a similar type setup that I would for fishing any type of Texas rig worm. I'm still gonna be pegging the weight, um, but I like to use something like 15 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Uh, this right here is Cigar Brazex. It's a really good choice for it. Um, you can use a lot of different types of uh, fluorocarbons, but that's the one I like to use because you're in and around cover. And, uh, and so, you know, if I'm trying to get deeper, I'll use 15. And then as I get shallower and thicker cover, I, I'll go up to, you know, 20 pound tests. But fluorocarbon, I feel like just gets me more bites. And because you're fishing more open water and less like in the thick stuff, you don't have to worry about you know having to use braid for that. And as far as the the reel rod and reel setup, the reel is actually the same also for for both of these. I like to use an 8.1 to one gear ratio VLD10 for that. Um, but the rod for the uh, the open water the or submergent grass is going to be a 7.3 medium heavy all purpose series rod. Uh, I like that that 7.3 medium heavy, that's like the perfect worm and rod. And that's essentially kind of what you're doing when you're fishing, you know, just kind of the submergent grass is just swim, you're just swimming in it as opposed to bouncing it off the bottom. So, um, you know, the 7.3 medium heavy works really good for that. But anyways, guys, I'm missing Florida fishing so bad right now because I should be down there throwing a turbo fatties on those grass flats. I'm really missing that. But this bait right here, I better just take one out of the package. Oh, and we also have to discuss colors. So before I close this out, I wanna also talk about colors for you Florida guys. So uh, there's four different colors that you need to have for Florida fishing. Okay, I'm gonna show you all of these real quick. All right, here we go. All right, so, I mean, you don't have to have all of these, but these are these are my absolute favorites. So for the dingiest, darkest water in Florida in uh, the cloudiest days, you know, something like a black and blue is gonna work really good. Black and blue is a favorite. Uh, June bug is actually a good kind of replacement for black and blue sometimes. So a lot of times I'll just carry June bug. Again, real dark tannic stained water cloudier days, that's when the June bug's gonna play. But if it's a little bit clearer, or maybe you got, you know, clear water, but you've got darker skies, um, you know, that's when I'm gonna be switching to a California craw color. California craw is actually one of my absolute favorite Florida colors overall, because it plays in both dirtier water and cloudier conditions, and also clear water around vegetation as well. So. California craw, if you're gonna just pick one, I would, I would definitely grab one of those. And then the other one is more for the clear water side around the grass, and that is watermelon red. So those are my favorite colors. That is one of my favorite baits of all time. And again, I wish I was down there with you guys fishing these Florida lakes, but pick up you know, a, a swimming worm like the Turbo Fatties, cover water down in Florida, and then don't stop until you start getting bit. And then once you find the fish with the swimming worm, you can either pick them apart with the swimming worm, or you can start, you know, picking that area apart with something like a stick bait, flipping rig, or, you know, something else. 
Overall, it's all about finding those key little stretches and you can do that really well with a turbo fatties or swimming worm in general. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. You can buy the turbo fatties at 44tackle.com and if you use the link in the description below, you can actually get 10% off your, your overall order and I get a little bit of a kickback to support the channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you use that link. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you out in the water.